So, if April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? Well, apparently this episode of the Campus Comics Cast. Uh, my name is Scott Reed, and I am joined on this episode by Mike Atchison and Chad Schubert. All right, so Spider Man turns sixty. Tom King's writing Rorschach, so we got a lot to talk about. But in case you missed it, Muddy Monster Comics is going to host not one, but two Power Rangers on Saturday, July 24th in Murfreesboro, Illinois. Details, of course, can be found on the Muddy Monster Comics Facebook page. So check it out. I'm not going to name the Power Rangers right now because I don't want to get them wrong. I don't want to insult any Power Ranger fans who happen to be out there. So uh, just go to the page. You can see which Power Rangers are going to be there for yourself. Be sure you mark yourself as interested or going to the event. And we'll just plan to have a really, really good day uh, that way. Mike, you going to be in town for the Muddy Monster Con on July 24th? Yes, actually, I will be. Well, good. I'll, I'll make a small edit. It is July 23rd. 23rd? It is the oh. 23rd. All right. Well, I'm a bonehead, so that goes without saying. But all right. So July 23rd. Thank you. Why did I think it was July 24th? Actually, I thought it was June 24th. So <laughs> I realized it was July. So I think I just changed the July. And, there you go. Uh, yeah. Or changed the June to July. Yeah, and it's got to change the 24th. So A lot can happen between now and then, too. I mean, I say I'm going to be in town, but you know, <laughs> I get I get orders thrown at me pretty quick about go here go there <laughs> all right so anyway amazing spider-man turns 60 so do either of you remember when you read your first spider-man book i don't Ooh. i just was asking so I, or I guess the question i guess the question is did you read a spider-man comic book before you watched a spider-man cartoon no i can definitely tell you that <laughs> for me I'm not, i can't I'm say not sure yeah I can't say that I I've done either. I mean, oh come on! I think Did I've you mentioned this before. Spider-Man cartoon? No, no. Wow. No, I can't. I can't say that I have. I mean, Super Friends was about it. Okay. I don't know why I was on a DC only diet <laughs> all my formative years, but I, I've said this before. But I really, when it comes to the comic books, you you know, my uncle used to bring me a, a stack from the Sparta printing, and I never thought of it then, but now I wonder why weren't there any Marvel comics in those stacks? <laughs> and I'm thinking maybe my cousins got first pick because yep. <laughs> I always got the old Silver Age Superman comics. There you go. So, uh, you know, or, or whatever. But <clears throat> I I never read. Uh, I can't say when my first uh, my first real experience, I think, with Spider-Man was the first Tobey Maguire movie, hmm. to be honest, even well, though, I, I mean, he was uh, ubiquitous and in pop culture i mean you just mm -hmm. don't not know who he is right he is you know, i've always said he's got the best superhero costume of all characters in comics um and probably one of the best power sets but let me ask you guys this mm -hmm. what do you prefer organic webbing or mechanical webbing mechanical webbing organic <laughs> i'm with you shed and I, maybe it's because i'm a toby mcguire guy <laughs> it just seems so unlikely that you could stash that much webbing anywhere without having like cartridges. a giant adam strange backpack or something he has cartridges <laughs> that's what his belt for is to hold all of his extra cartridges of web fluid it's I'm the same science that allows the flash to have a super compressed costume in a ring <laughs> so yes comic book science it, it works otherwise well no. and and you know if he, if he doesn't have organic webbing then what's the point of being spider-man i mean he needs to it's, have spider things yeah, like well, I mean, being able to climb on stop, walls and well right, why know, stop at the spider sins why okay, stop at the <laughs> because if you go organic webbing then you got to go full-on spider and we all know where spiders shoot their webbing out of so we don't want to <laughs> see that <laughs> on the all right, so let's, just, let's just take care of that right now. I, you know, it pains me to say this, but you have a great point. Yeah, right? you're right. <laughs> well, there are plenty of memes that you can go online and, and reference that. So that's well, you just ruined it for me, Scott. Thanks. Yeah, not an original thought on my part. So, yeah. Part of it one is, thing I learned from my comic book reading uh, for this episode on Spider-Man was I didn't know at some point in his career in one of the iterations, he actually shot it out of the top of his hand, not the lower, the under part of his wrist. Oh, hmm. I don't remember that personally. But. I don't remember which decade, but I, I don't want to spoil which what book I read. But uh, oh, OK, yeah, there were images where he's shooting almost like a booster gold, um, you know, at the top thing. of his hand. Hmm. I wonder if that's maybe one of the clones or something. 
It could be. It could be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because the Riley. whole the whole fingers on the you know pressing on yeah. the the shoot is pretty classic. So. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so who wants to go first? Mike, I think you got to go first. Uh, yeah, sometimes I've just got all that nervous energy and I need to talk. That's There you go. I understand. <laughs> this is one of those times. <laughs> so, as you know, I'm not just steeped in Spider-Man knowledge, uh, much, much less uh, the Marvel, all the Marvel characters, but Spider-Man is one of my favorites. And um, my choice to celebrate his 60th anniversary is Spider-Man Life Story. Now, part of the reason is it seemed very appropriate to review, read and review a book that talks about his life story over the past 60 years, which, you know, it's, if you go real time, I know he was, what, 15 when he got the power, so he's more like probably 72, 73 by the end of the book because this story, uh, written by Chip Zdarsky, and art by Mark Bagley uh, covers every decade of Spider-Man's existence since his, you know, origin. And he's, so when you say it's his 60th anniversary, it's, yeah, but he's more like around 77 years old. If he would have, would have, uh, you know, life, lived his life as a normal person, not with the constant reboots the comic characters have to do over all this time. And, the other reason I read it or chose this book to read is that, well, actually there's three. I had it already. <laughs> I had the trade. <laughs> had full intentions of reading it, but always got somehow pushed off to the side. And then thirdly, it just got great rave reviews by people. People just loved it. And I can't, I, I just, I have to agree wholeheartedly. Now, I do have favorite decades over others, but I mean, the 60s and 70s, uh, Zdarsky is just one of the best storytellers there is out there. I've, I've, I haven't read a whole lot of his stuff, but what I have read, I've just super loved. Um, the 60s and 70s, or at least the first half of the 70s, didn't really wow me. Uh, or maybe it just didn't live up to all the hype that I had heard uh, about the book. But as it went on, I f- kept finding myself more and more drawn in by this real-time concept. And I think I know, I think they did this with the Fantastic Four too, but I don't know that it came across or people loved it as much. <clears throat> they but, also did a, uh, a <clears throat> Life Story, a Spider-Man annual recently for a Spider-Man Life Story. Oh, okay. Okay. And this came out, what, in maybe 19, 2019, I think? Yeah. I don't, I don't remember exactly. But, yeah, it's, it's, but, it's a couple years old, but, um, and it's not, it didn't like, it wasn't the groundbreaking that you might think because the. Superman Batman World's Finest by John Byrne did the same thing. It had like a had like a prestige format comic that sh- basically told the story of the two heroes um over the course of 40 years. It wasn't I don't know that it was as well done as this. Um in fact, I haven't read all of them. I've only read a couple. But anyway, this real time concept really maybe it's my age now too. It's like, wow, this is <laughs> just really kind of this resonates more with me than just the constant, you know, the perpetual 25 year old or i remember in the old dc letter columns they'd say uh superman is 29 years old that's his age period (laughs) this year last year and next year he's 29 years old (laughs) here's a bit of trivia for you shad when's superman's birthday Ooh, i i don't know scott i I have no idea he's a leap year baby february 29th oh okay yeah (laughs) Some people say that's why he aged uh, slower. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm as I went along through like the 80s, especially is where it kicked in. I became more intrigued by the references to these other Marvel events I had never read about, uh, and now I want to go back and read them. And I'm not even sure if they actually all happened. I know Secret Wars did. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I didn't ask you guys. Have you read this life story? No. We read it for the podcast, didn't we? Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> maybe. maybe that might have been before I came on the podcast. Maybe so that was. I, I'm pretty sure. I, I'm. We, so maybe it was with Dan and somebody okay. else. So, yeah. Wow, that, that was your other uh, friend, Scott. I guess not me. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I had never read it before, and uh, you know, they they have these references to events um, in this storyline, Secret Wars, the death of um, 
uh, Norman and Gwen clones. Uh, and I don't know exactly how true to the original story these were, but, uh, you know, they go back and forth about which was the clone, which was the real Gwen, et cetera. And then, you know, subsequently the clones marry one marries Mary Jane one and and the real one marries the clone Gwen. I don't know. I make, I get confused even talking about it, but <laughs> it makes me want to, is this all part of that whole clone saga that was well, started in the early nineties? Okay. Or? So my, my gripe against life stories was that they didn't tell the same stories just with an aged um, Peter Parker. They, um, basically changed some stuff early on and then it had this snowball effect to change future events i see so um so out of the clone wars or the clone saga you know the clone died peter parker lived Mm -hmm. then they had the clone i can't remember what they refer to it as now maybe it's just a continuation of the clone saga where there was this question mark about whether it actually was or wasn't peter parker who lived then we got the whole ben riley and, and all that fun stuff um but but yeah, but yeah, so I, I, I don't I don't remember where I was going with that now. <laughs> but but yeah, it's it's uh, um, out of the original story. Peter Parker's the one that survives. So, yeah, so Mike, I, yeah. I know that you read this as a as a collection, but is each individual issue uh, like a, a, a decade in its own? Is that kind of how it's handled? Yeah, each okay. issue uh, there's 60s, 70s, 80s. 90s 2000s 2010s so there were six issues mm-hmm. basically of this series yeah i assume it was a series right scott or was it actually come out as a trade it, it was limited it, series yeah. yeah limited series yeah so yeah they were but it was it, it wasn't like they were con, con distinctly different stories they it carried over very fluidly and smoothly okay. from one issue to the next um, you know, I think Bagley, even though Bagley's not my absolute favorite star, favorite artist, depending on who the inker was, whether it was, I don't know, gosh, John Dell maybe was one of them. There were, they, they, there was a couple different inkers, but his art looked, um, better than I remembered when he did the justice league. Uh, and you know, in the eighties also, there was the this was the storyline scott maybe you can tell me whether it really happened in other marvel comics but there was this uh russian attack on the u.s when most of the heroes had disappeared and vision was trying to stop a missile from landing on the u.s soil but the missile had the ability to change its density and and so did vision of course because that's his powers but he uh it actually landed not in Manhattan where it was aimed at, but it it landed in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which was decimated. So I'm just curious, did that happen? They had all these backup heroes come in and and save the day. I don't think so, but I don't know that for a fact um, because in in the comic timeline, what would happen literally is at the end of one issue, like the characters would go into the portal for secret wars. And at the Mm. very start of the next issue, they were back. They come back from wherever they return. And then this, this limited series just told the story of what happened Mm. while they were in the portal. Mm. So, um, I don't think that happened, but I could be completely incorrect. And by the way, we talked about Spider-Man life stories on episode 52 of the campus comics cast. So it's way back there. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually yeah, in definitely. 2019, so yeah. <laughs> it was before I was uh, on the show. All right. Uh, well, and I also say that I will also say that the um, I, I enjoyed the. I, I've never really read much about the symbiote suit, you know, hmm. the Venom uh, storyline and Craven. Uh, there were just a lot I want to check out. Um, I'd say the book ended up being less to me of a celebration of 60 years and more of just an inspiration to for someone who hasn't read a bunch of this stuff to go on and read more so uh i mean high marks i thought again though like we have we have these discussions about movies sometimes sometimes when you know too much about a particular superhero or uh universe you can be more critical because you just know more about it Maybe that's why I like this so much because I'm more of a clean slate. 
Makes sense. I'm trying to I'm trying to find anything about the uh, nuclear explosion here in uh, vision history, but I'm not just a quick search. Yeah. I'm not I'm not finding anything. So well, maybe they need to write it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there were some times like vision became like this dominating, you know, you know, he tried to take over the world, stuff like that. They turned into a villain, you know, a couple of times in his history. But, yeah. uh, but uh, I don't, I don't remember that specific event. So, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, well that's Shad? my celebratory review. All right. Why don't you go uh, back, Shad? I did the uh, Spider Man Blue, the, uh, the series by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sell. And, uh, and this was a, a six issue mini series uh, in the 2002 to 2003 is when that ran. Uh, it's the second of their um, four color stories that they ended up doing over in Marvel. Um, and the second one following the Daredevil Yellow series that they did. Uh, and this is um, a retelling of it's it's Valentine's Day and and Spider-Man is kind of recounting his his uh, journey falling in love with Gwen Stacy and her untimely death and kind of is similar to Mike's story in that it's it's a retelling of issues that have already existed covering loosely uh, covering what is that issues 40 through 48 of Amazing Spider-Man and 63 is what it says. Um, but it's you kind of get to see the the budding friendship of him and Harry Osborn. You get to see uh, him meeting and falling in love with Gwen Stacy through these kind of his memory of, of walking through that. Um, and there's a, a bunch of villains in, in these six issues. You get Craven the Hunter, you get Vulture, you get Green Goblin, you get Rhino, you get Lizard. It's just it's all over the place. And uh, for me, it's a uh, it's I'll, I'll follow Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale doing <laughs> anything. Uh, and so this was a was a, a really cool series. All the whole color series was cool, especially being a, a, a long Halloween kid and being like that being the most amazing thing in the world and then going, oh, and they did Marvel stuff, too. <laughs> uh, and and kind of and same, uh, you know, same as, as Mike and not a lot of Spider-Man under my belt. And so this was one of those introduction points to be like, I'll follow this creative team anywhere they kind of go uh, into it. And um, I thought it was it's it's a cool way to tell a, a story uh, that's already been told kind of a a cover version if you know if it was a really cool band doing it like uh i in my notes i was like it's like when Jimi hendrix does all along the watchtower or like <laughs> like it's like a really cool version of it that's maybe even better <laughs> than the original uh and uh so yeah i thought it was very cool that it was around the um the valentine's day and you know in this story in the real timeline peter's married to mary jane and she even sees him kind of talking like kind of yeah, about this or kind of working through all this and then she's like oh and you know tell Gwen I said hi you know kind of like <laughs> knowing that that he's going through this this memory of a lost love and kind of appreciating that with him and then everything they've been through so I thought it's a really cool story yeah that that one I do have fond memories of that story and, and all of that color series is actually really really good yeah. so because well, there's Daredevil Yellow Hulk Gray and and okay. Captain America bl- uh, Blue right white White, that's right. White, yeah. white, white. <laughs> are you? Um, have you always been, or are you? You're a big fan of Tim Sale's art because yes, it, it doesn't always stick with me. Um, I was probably the what I. I don't know. I guess in some ways I liked it on Long Halloween, but um, his, I just wonder how it would translate for other heroes than Batman and his really unique rogues gallery, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, I I I feel like anything any any thing in that's that very recognizable. It's you know slightly rough, uh, but unique. It stands out. You can identify it pretty easily that it that it's him. And you're like I've I've recognized this artwork somewhere, um, <laughs> and it it seems to to go well. I I like it more on the people in in this story than I you know. Spider Man's fine. It, 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 there's nothing wrong with it, but I definitely like the way that he draws, like Gwen Stacy, and and draws. Yeah. And and the way he makes Harry look is just kind of is very nerdy, kind of looking, and uh, <laughs> so yeah, I I dig it. Yeah. I just feel like anytime you see those two names associated on any project, you know you're going to get something special. Mm-hmm. 
you know it doesn't yeah. it, so whether or not it's your cup of tea artwork wise or or whatever it just feels like it's going to be something special and worth reading so that's, yeah that's kind of my take on it yeah good point uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you All got right. okay so i i actually i went a little overkill on this i <laughs> i pulled out three different stories i i won't take very much time on any of them uh but uh the first one is actually a two-parter from amazing spider-man issues 229 and 230 and it's i don't know i don't know how well this will show up here on the thing but it's a storyline called nothing can stop stop the juggernaut all right, and the idea here is how, how does Peter Parker, Spider-Man, go up against a villain that is so way above his weight class? And it's it kind of you kind of get that never give up attitude, you know, never give up the fight thing that that Peter Parker does. And this is, you know, when he's down on his luck, he's, you know, he, he can't keep a job. Aunt May's still sick all the time. You know, he doesn't have any money and and now the juggernaut's in town and wreaking havoc and and it's his responsibility to stop him. So it's just a great uh, two part story um, drawn by John Romita Jr. And I think I'm going to look up the, the writer just yeah, written by Roger Stern and Roger Stern um, in this time period had a really, really good run on Amazing Spider-Man because right after this, the, these two issues, there's a two part um Mr. Hyde and Cobra story that is also just really, really good. I almost pulled it out as well, just because <laughs> they're like back to back to back in my mm. in my collection. So um anyway, yeah, two parter. Nothing can stop the juggernaut. This is a really, really popular story. Um it's actually been reprinted in a trade, just these two issues. Oh. So um not that they're necessarily easy to find, but uh but yeah, super, super good. And then the next one is actually a backup story. So this is from Amazing Spider-Man number 248. Um, it's written by uh, Roger Stern again. So it's actually, you know, still on this on the Stern run uh, with artwork by Ron Friends. And in this issue, he Ron Friends is really uh, trying to draw like Steve Ditko. Um, but uh, he, he uh, you, you look at Ron Friends work and sometimes he'll. He'll ape Ditko or he'll ape uh, Kirby if it's if it's appropriate. I got a really there's some Silver Surfer books that friends drew that were they look just like Jack Kirby. But anyway, this is just story. Spider-Man pops up in this kid's bedroom and the the title of the story is The Kid Who Collects Spider-Man. Um, and basically, he just sits down and has a conversation. The kid goes through all of his newspaper clippings that he's collected um, about Spider-Man over the year. And they just have and it's really like it's only like eight pages. It's not even a very long story. You know, Spider-Man tells him how he got his powers and eventually shows the web shooters that are on his wrist, <laughs> not organic. OK, <laughs> That's from a pre uh, discussion there that we had, but uh, I was to say you realize the audience has no idea why. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. That. <laughs> <laughs> but but the kicker is here in the last couple of pages, where Spider-Man to this kid takes off his mask, reveals his identity to this to this kid, um, tells him what his name is. You know, the kid realizes that he's the one that's been taking all the pictures of Spider-Man, and then as Peter Parker leaves leaves the kid's bedroom he's standing on this wall you know he's got his head hung down and basically you see that he this kid that he spoke to was in a cancer clinic and the very last panel they have this little blurb about tim harrison the little kid you know passed away of leukemia from leukemia mm. so it's just a it's just like it's that's one of the spider-man stories that has stuck with me the longest um so it's definitely one what year did that come out in oh, the gosh. 90s or? Uh, this is a or 80s 90 i guess it's, is it 94 <laughs> i can't tell if it's 90 the, my print on my indicia is a little blurred i remember stern 84 yeah that makes sense because stern yeah. came over and did superman mm -hmm. in the late 80s i think or early 90s and then the last one that i want to talk about uh this is from amazing spider-man annual number 15 this is written by Denny O'Neill, all right, with pencils by Frank Miller. <laughs> and uh, anyway, what happens in this story? The, the punchline is, of course, J. Jonah Jameson, once again, is publishing stories about Spider-Man being a menace. All right. And uh, through the course of the story, for, and I didn't reread it for this, but uh, Dr. Octopus basically is trying to kill a good portion of New York 
So what does he decide to do? He decides to break into the Daily Bugle and basically poison the ink that the paper is printed on. So that way, anybody who touches the paper that's going to get absorbed uh, through their through their skin. All right. Um, in this issue, we've got uh, the Punisher is around, uh, who also is there trying to, uh, um, you know, just create problems. Or Spider Man trying to stop the Punisher from, you know, killing individuals, killing people. But again, getting back to the main story. So in the end, uh, Jameson, you know, he has this big headline that he wants to that he wants to print. You know, it's like his full page. Uh, he, he knows it's going to sell all kinds of papers and they even show the the headline. Uh, I'm trying to flip to it and find the headline here because I just saw it just a second. Oh, yeah. Publisher saves the city. Poison Inkman is halted by Bugle Chief. It's got a big picture of a smiling J. Jonah Jameson on the front cover. They've got uh, Dr. Octopus, you know, uh, chained. And here comes uh, Robbie basically saying, you know, I don't want to rain in your parade, Jonah. But if but the paper could uh, put us out of business, people are bound to think our ink is poisoned or might be. So J. Jonah Jameson has to kill this story, and they go back. Last page is another Spider-Man threat or menace story. And uh, J- Jameson's walking past one of the guys selling newspaper, and he's like, you know, can't even get the bugle away with all this garbage that you keep printing. So, <laughs> <laughs> But it's a nice, self-contained story. Got Frank Miller artwork. Um, I'm a. This is early on Punisher, where there wasn't just constant Punisher stuff every time you turned around, you know. Um, so it was good. So just again, those are three stories that have stuck with me as far as Spider-Man goes over the year. And again, I like them well enough that they're actually in my collection. So <laughs> that was my question. If these are in your personal collection. Yes. I actually pulled these books out of my, out of my personal collection to show them because they're, they're important enough to me that I want to own copies of these. So that means you would have graded them. I forgot what your very grade. fine or better they would be very, very fine, fine or better, or better. Okay. yeah all right <laughs> absolutely very fine or better so <laughs> all right so happy anniversary uh spider-man any last thoughts or comments on spidey i'm gonna have to read some more i think that's my 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 final comment <laughs> well i think we should all read what each other have yeah. uh has read that's so the- and you said, Scott, are, are yours available on the uh, Marvel app? You know, I didn't even check because well, you don't have to look. I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, but yeah, I, I I assume probably, but again, I didn't uh, I didn't check that. So yeah, okay, so I'm sure. All right, we ready to move on to Rorschach? I believe so. Okay, Rorschach. so yeah, so guess what? Tom King's got a book out. We <laughs> inevitably are going to talk about it. So. <laughs> We're going to Welcome to the Com- Tom King yeah. Fandom Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got Rorschach, a 12-issue series. We're going to talk about the first uh, six issues of this. Now, I was telling myself as I read it the first time, it's like, man, I do not know what the name of some of these characters are, even after having read it. It's like, the detective, <laughs> what is his oh. name? Okay, the, I, you know, I don't know that they give his name. Okay, that's my point because I'm flipping through, looking at all the panels that the detective is in. They never give his name. Yeah, he's the enigma. Mm-hmm. He's, and I, I mean, but he's not the only character that they treat that way. Um, the strong man, and we'll get into this. Yeah. Later, you know, they don't, they don't ever give his name. I was making no. notes and I was, I was like, strong man. I guess. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what was like. <laughs> so I was like, I thought I need to create a cast. So that way, <laughs> for people who are reading this, so yeah. they can kind of recognize who some of these characters are. But right. you, there's no name to the detective. I don't know that we get Governor Turley's first name. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, do we ever get that? We don't. I don't know if we get the name of like his. Yeah, because I even looked. I remember going back and looking at that two-page splash where they're at, like on page three and four, or whatever, or two and three of the, of the, uh, uh. uh rally for turley Mm -hmm. where this rorschach and what i call the cowgirl before i knew that's exactly the name that i gave her i have it in my notes yeah so yeah that was i was looking there to see if any of those signs said bill turley or something yeah no just just turley (laughs) turley so it was like it was so weird it was like man i don't i feel like i didn't consume this book well because i didn't know the characters names well 
there was a reason for that. Yeah. You so, get your money's worth, even though it's it's not a slow read. It's not a, like a a, 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 a a chore of a read, but you no. definitely re- need to read it more than once. Mm-hmm. Well, I've kind of come to the realization that most books that if I actually want to have a chance to remember it, I'm going to have to start reading them twice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so, yeah, because I'll, I'll talk about that in our next episode about how my memory <laughs> has failed me on a few books. So. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, we have these we have these characters. I'm going to call refer to him as Rorschach one, which is apparently real name. Will Myerson. We'll get into him mm-hmm. later on, uh, but also possibly Walter Kovacs, who is the, of course, the original Rorschach from the Watchmen series. We have Laura Cummings. And Scott, pray tell. Why do you say possibly? Well, we'll talk Are about that in issue that? one. OK, all right. We'll get to that. All <laughs> OK. <right. laughs> we have Laura Cummings, who is the cowgirl. All right, so she's mm-hmm. our um, our female lead, I guess, uh, for this. Then we have the detective, who I don't have anything else to call him other than the detective. He's the the straight man. He's That's the straight right. man. He's like, he's like your he's your Bud Abbott. He's well, he is the individual through who the story is basically being told. I, I think is how I would right. Think. It's through his perspective, his narrative. Yeah. So maybe we're supposed to be the detective. I I don't know. Maybe that's what he's trying to say. Mm-hmm. And then of course you need to know Robert Redford who is currently the president of the United States. And yes, it is the actor, Robert Redford. Running for his fifth term currently. Fifth term after he defeated Nixon, who Mm -hmm. had four terms as president, Mm -hmm. was not, uh, did not have the whole Watergate thing happen uh, to him. And then of course running. And and so clearly in this reality, the, uh, the law after the FDR four terms was not put into place. No, was not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or was repealed. Yeah. Right. I, I would suspect it was repealed. It probably was put into place. That's good. Yeah, that's a good point. By, by Nixon. And yeah. And, have, and probably after the, the squid attack after mm-hmm. at, at the end of Watchmen, they probably said we can't have a, can't yeah. be changing seats at yeah. this time. We need National to repeal security that. Trump's exactly. All. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And then we have a Republican governor whose last name is Turley. That's the only thing we know that is running against Robert Redford for president of the United States. So those are your principal, I guess your principal characters. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, we'll have Rorschach two show up who I can only call the strong man because mm-hmm. that's the only thing that he's given as far as identity. So any other important characters in this that we need to. Uh, well, first of all, I don't know that, of the people that listen, do we need to warn them there will be getting into spoiler territory? Oh, but yeah, yeah, goes it's, it goes with it. We don't Absolutely. we don't <laughs> normally do spoiler spoiler free reviews, but I'd say the uh, the the henchman or no, not the henchman, but the the uh, campaign manager for Turley is a pretty important character too. Okay, and that's another one. I'm not sure if he's and got a name. I don't think there's a name for him either. So okay, now do we see him more than in the first issue? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. He reports. Uh, the detective reports back. Okay. Um, to him because he's sort of the conduit between Turley himself mm-hmm. and the detective until uh, they finally meet face to face. Until they on. meet face to face. Yeah. In the, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the John. In yeah. the John. That's right. So. All right. So let's let's just dive into this so we can actually start talking about it full blown. So all right. So issue one. Basically, we have an attempted assassination on. Governor Turley, who, of course, is running against Robert Redford for president of the United States. And in this attempted assassination, the two assassins are actually killed. The first being the cowgirl. All right. And then the second being Rorschach. And they're basically both killed on the catwalk up above where this rally is taking place for uh, Governor Turley. Well, during the autopsy, we basically discover that Rorschach is approximately this 80 year old man. Um, and the big kicker at the end of the issue is that we learn that the fingerprints for this 80 year old individual match the fingerprints for Walter Kovacs, who is of course Rorschach from the original Watchmen series. So, uh, so there you have it. Now there's not, again, there's not a whole lot that happens in this issue, right? Yeah. But right. it's still, it's still good storytelling. Yeah. So. We do establish <laughs> that it's 35 years after Watchmen. Mm-hmm. And only one year after the series, which it does live within, all of that exists together because they reference the event the, in Oklahoma. Yep, the yep. event in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I think yeah, at the end of this issue, my big question is, you know, is there a way that the you know is is since he has the same fingerprints, obviously it could be Walter Kovacs, or 
could it be a clone of that? You know, does Oz- Ozymandias has some sort of cloning technology? Mm-hmm. So that kind of was in the back of my head immediately. It was like, well, there's something weird going on with that to where, and we're assuming that Ozymandias is, is he at, at, alive at the end of the series or did he kill himself? Oh my gosh. I can't remember. I, you know, I'm trying to think if he was still alive at the end or not. <laughs> yeah. I think I think he was. I think okay. he was. Yeah, I agree. I think he was. Okay. But I don't remember. I mean, all I know about him. I mean, I just think about him killing Doctor Manhattan, but or yeah. so-called killing him. But well, at the end of the comic series, but that is the TV series. The TV, oh, the TV series. series. Yeah, he died. Yeah, in the TV series, absolutely. He, oh, he did. Okay. He okay. Got, That's what I he thought. He got atomized. Oh, he got oh. atomized. Okay. Okay. Oh no 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 no! I'm thinking of the senator. You're thinking of Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, you're thinking. <laughs> no, of Dr. I'm thinking of that senator. Oh, that was the yeah. bad guy. Yeah. Uh, in the series, it was. <laughs> this makes Jeremy you want to watch the the TV series just as much as it makes you want to re- watch it again. Re- yeah, Watchmen. Mm-hmm. and reread Watchmen. <laughs> yeah, which I am in the middle yeah. of currently. Also, I was like, I'm just gonna go ahead and start that also. <laughs> now, but go ahead, Mike. I'm just. I don't know where Shad had left off, but are you gonna get into Will Myerson and who he's a clear. Ana- well, that's analog not until issue sec- that's not until issue two. Okay. So we don't get that until issue two, but but yes, I do plan. But okay. I do want to talk about in issue one is during the course of the detective's investigation, he basically comes across this recording of auto binder or bender. I don't, you'll have to give me the pronunciation. I've heard that. it both ways. Uh, okay. Binder is what I've always said. Just okay. Because that's the, I would have said bender, yeah. but you know, it is an I, so who knows? But now this is an actual real individual, uh, co-created Supergirl, And then apparently mm-hmm. wrote a lot of captain Marvel stories. And there is apparently an actual tape recording of this seance that occurred. And then this has been brought into this yes. story. Huh. Now, if you read the blurb for issue seven, they're going to come back to that seance in issue seven. So it's not really talked about here the rest of the way through issues one through six, and maybe just mentioned in passing, but we're apparently going to revisit that. Another name <laughs> that gets mentioned in this seance is Frank Miller. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, at this point, I don't know if that's this. I can't imagine it's not referring to the same Frank Miller who, <laughs> you know, is a DC Comics, you know, creator, Dark Knight Returns, right. all this fun stuff. But it seems like it. It seems like it was a. If it was intended to be somebody else, they would have changed the name. But I, I, I can't say one hundred percent for sure if that is or is not the case. I haven't read anything past issue six, hmm. so. But maybe we'll learn in issue seven. My only, re- my only reason that I could rationalize why he would be mentioned in this is that maybe his, his, some of his comics represent a similar type of, well, mentality yeah. of, you know, ultra conservatism. You know, you think about the Dark Knight and mm-hmm. um, that kind of thing, and um, um, you know, but the, the yeah. Frank Miller in this, he's 16. This is before any of his comic career has started. If and, yeah, right, right. Same right. Frank Miller. So, um, but anyway, that's maybe probably the age you would have been when they had the seance. Mm-hmm. Did uh, did either of you read past issue six? I no. haven't. Okay, no, I have right. not. Okay, so we're we're all clueless in the same level. So I guess when we talk about the next six issues, we'll maybe get a little bit of clarity on that. So, um, that's one thing that I'm kind of interested in reading now, Mike. Did you notice the masks on page 12 of the story? Well, I don't have it in front of me. Um, um, I, don't, I don't know if I can blow this up where you can actually see this or not. Let's see. If I I'm didn't pack them up right now. Me. Let's see, see if I can. Do you look closely at the masks? Do you see a particular chrome dome uh, that might be of, you know, oh, interest looks like, to you? That looks like Dr. Manhattan. Well, I'm talking about the one that would be to Dr. Manhattan's Dr. Manhattan's left. To his Oh, Peacemaker. <laughs> what? Yeah. So. That's interesting. <laughs> well, I, I you know, I never paid attention to those panels at all, except I know that was they were talking about where where this Dr. Manhattan mass. or not I mean this Rorschach and Cowgirl got their costumes and they said 
this was like at their their autopsy and mm-hmm. the FBI is there and the they're saying, well, they just are dime store costumes. Yeah, they're not like the right. original Rorschach mask right. that moved and stuff. That moved, sorry. yeah. Right. But I What's... I didn't notice it the first time through. I noticed it the second time through on this particular story. But I'll I thought it was done. kinda I thought it was kinda funny because, you know, the comedian is actually the what the the watchman version of the peacemaker, peacemaker. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they don't show just like the peak, the comedian's mask. They show Dr. Manhattan instead of Captain Adam. They show Rorschach, you know, instead of the question. They show Night Owl instead of um, um, mm-hmm. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle, thank you. But they don't show comedian. They show Peacemaker. So I thought that yeah. was a little a little odd, but uh, I thought you would appreciate that. That's a that's a that's uh, a Tom King Easter egg there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> and Shad, like you said, I really like the fact that they at least gave a nudge to the Watchmen TV series. On yeah. It, it kind of established, it helps you kind of go, okay, all of this does count in, in mm-hmm. the same world, yeah. in a world where we, we just dealt with doomsday clock and, and you know how all that plays in. It's, it's good to know what is established true to the world is true to the world. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. And I guess we maybe should mention, which will come into more, importance in subsequent issues is Pontius Pirate, mm-hmm. <laughs> who is yeah. obviously a play on Pontius Pilate from the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which is a character that is created by an individual by the name of Will Myerson, which we'll learn more about mm-hmm. in issue two. So I don't know. Anything else for issue one? And is is Pontius Pirate the is that the pirate comic book from the original Watchmen? Is that I don't the, know. one and the same? Because I don't know if they ever named him. Mm, I don't think no. so. Okay. I don't no. Think that, so. that, that was the black the the black freighter was yeah. the story, and I don't remember the. And I don't know that it was so much of a pirate as it was. Well, it talked about pirates because he was on yeah. a pirate ship to mm-hmm. escape. They were attacked by pirates, and I think that's yeah. why the pirates are popular a popular yeah. mechanism because of you know what yeah. happened in the original Watchmen series. And why Will Myerson used to draw pirates. So Right. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, I didn't know if that was a direct connection to say that Will Myerson drew the comic book that we saw in Watchmen was kind of was I didn't know if the if it all ran that deep. Oh, I th- I would have to say there it would have to be no because that was being produced in nineteen eighty five, whenever the Watchmen was coming out because the kid was actually reading mm-hmm. that comic through the story and yeah. at that point mm-hmm. walter kovacs was still rorschach and ca- always busy carrying around his sign and yes <laughs> and just being generally you if know weird. this is so, if that if is walter is, kovacs it, that's that's true that's true too so. and they talk in a later issue when they do a little bit of exposition but we'll get to that i think it's an issue six about yeah. how that could be walter kovacs well we'll have to talk about that because i don't i mean i just have forgotten that part. Yeah, so. well, we'll wait till we get to six. All right. I just All wonder right. if there. Here's a theory. Before we get too much further, are we only given the names of people that aren't Walter Kovacs? And that's why there's so many people that don't have names yet, is because we'll learn names as the as we find out the people that aren't him. Oh, that's a good theory. Who aren't Ro, Ro, Rorschach, oh. and <laughs> and they'll that's reveal names, and and that's why there's so many people that don't have names yet because they haven't been. They're all potentially suspects to be Rorschach. Okay. And I'm willing to bet that the detective is going to be some derivative or something that's more than just a detective. He's not just a point of view character. Yeah, I, I think agree. He's going to be more. Yeah. He really is the soul of Rorschach and Dr. Manhattan really did transfer souls into bodies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> All right, so issue two, okay. uh, Will Myerson, who we're going to call Rorschach for now, um, basically he's presented as if he is a ultimately more violent version of Steve Ditko. He's the recluse. He um, is the artist. He doesn't. He's not around people. And in fact, in this issue, we get an original art story of the citizen, who is basically obviously the question. Uh, mm-hmm. Going up against the the unthinker, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and and basically through this comic, uh, the detective actually learns that Rorschach and Laura Cummings actually killed 
one of Myerson's neighbors. They broke in, denied him his heart medication. He dies of a heart attack because of some history that Myerson had with this individual and and his wife. You know, uh, they'd almost been on a date and that didn't work out. And then he would rib him about it and just finally mm-hmm. just Myerson breaks and, and they go and kill him um, or let him die maybe is a better way. To Which, eat. to be fair, I mean, you, you figure, uh, you, you know, you earlier you said, Will Myerson is sort of a more violent version of Steve Dicko, but he lived probably 75 or 80 years of his life not being that. And it wasn't until that that where he tipped over the edge after this correspondence and his building this friendship with Laura Cummings, the cowgirl, mm-hmm. um, uh-huh. that he they took it to the level of going after the the guy that had just tortured him because mm-hmm. he, you know, uh, Myerson dated that guy's wife before they had even met and she kind of yeah. snubbed him. And then well, you know, one they lived date. in the same apartment complex. Yeah. One mm-hmm. date been in the same apartment complex for decades. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Uh, and it actually, what say. triggered it to what triggered it was at some point, the husband beats up Myerson. So that's yeah. then kind of what, you know, yes. kind, of throws, yeah. kind of throws him over the edge there. But I did think the, uh, like the original art pages were really really cool in this uh in this issue mm-hmm. I kind of enjoyed that uh, did you did you read the the the, the dialogue between the citizen oh, yeah. and the unthinker oh my god was that impossible to penetrate i mean <laughs> what it just shows you how crazy that stuff is oh yeah so i'm it's... like what <laughs> <laughs> but and for tom point. king to come up yeah. with it i was impressed <laughs> yeah. i you know and i've never read any mr a but as I understand it, it's pretty yeah. it's pretty tough to. <laughs> yeah. And I, I really feel like I should. I really feel like I should. Yeah. Um, at some point, you know, dive in and read some Mr. A. And I've only read a little bit of Steve Ditko's question, you know, just just a few issues here and there. So hmm. um, I also like how they use that different coloring to yes, show some of the that. events in the past and and, you know, to differentiate it from you know, the present, which is, is really, really nice. It kind of helps make it a little bit more obvious whenever we've changed time periods or, you know, the detective is thinking backwards and, you know, and even like how far backwards he goes. So, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have, I kept waiting. Okay. So there's that scene where Will Byerson, after he gets, he's beaten up, he goes back to his drawing board and like blood drips onto one of the comic pages Mm-hmm. And I kept waiting for that to drip a la the, you know, the button, oh, the button. You know, <laughs> from from Watchmen. But, you know, it, it that nothing like that ever happens. But even on those original art pages that they show, they're like there's little bits of blood on a couple of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I was waiting for them to, like, show the back of some of the art pages and like there'd just be notes or some of them would be in the in the trash because apparently, you know, Ditko didn't, you know, value his art. Mm. particularly you know so. and, and have we even commented on uh jorge fornia's art no we haven't um i just so. think it's outstanding and perfect mm-hmm. for this comic mm-hmm. it, it's great. it's it feels it feels like it belongs in the watchman universe yes you know it's while it's not dave gibbons it's definitely it definitely fits into the watchman universe mm-hmm. yep all right anything else to say about issue two not for me. I, I think you hit it all. Okay. All right. Well, let's go on to issue three. So issue three, um, we basically hear we get a little bit of history about Laura Cummings because um, the detective <laughs> visits her hometown. So we basically learn that she was raised by her father because uh, his her father killed her mother because he decided that she had been infected by the squids and it was affecting her. And then uh, and it caused her to be warped. So he basically had to kill kill the mother and then he is the one who basically trained her with her becoming a mob of a marksman she is and i guess we should you know point out that you know she'll do tricks trick shooting um you know it's kind of almost like bullseye and that she never never misses i mm-hmm. guess um there's like little she, annie oakley is what my notes say there you go so she she can do all that so it's it's the father that's actually trained her uh, in this way but then later on so i guess she's about I don't know, 12, I think at this point, the father says, I think I'm basically says, I think I'm infected by the squids. 
I want you to kill me and then put 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 the gun in my hand to make it look like a suicide. And she just boom shoots him, puts the gun in his hand, walks away. Um, so that was kind of a pretty uh, <laughs> a pretty dark uh, moment yeah. in the story. It's yeah, shoots him, <laughs> puts the gun in his hand, kisses him on the cheek, walks away. <laughs> mm. Just kind of kind of crazy. So, what do uh, you take that? Uh, you know those those pages as the panel. You know she she shoots him as a young girl, and then she walks back to him to kiss him on the cheek again later as an older woman yeah. with Rorschach with her, and his body's still there. Like what what are it's, what are we taking from that? It's her memory. I think it's her I, reliving the memory okay. because she's relating it maybe to to Will Myerson at the time and. Um, she's kind of just going through her old haunts when they're yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was I, a great way to tell that too. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. But it also could be the, and we'll talk about this in issue five, cause I've got a similar moment like that in issue five where I'm like, I'm not for sure what's going on. It also could just be the detective kind of trying to reimagine what had happened. Mm-hmm. And so he, he, it's maybe just his take as he's going exactly. through the book and and he's in the mm-hmm. diner and even catches a glance with her with her you know not really her but they kind of yeah. look eye to eye and yeah but they he sits they sit down at a booth across from where he's at and, mm-hmm. you know and and of course now and this just occurred to me when Doctor Manhattan's involved and especially what we had in the Watchmen TV series where he can see and communicate with himself in different times, mm-hmm. right? Do we have something similar happening here where either the detective or Rorschach or Laura Cummings is the one that's actually there and seeing, seeing different times at the same time, because we know that's something that Dr. Manhattan is capable of, mm-hmm. but we don't get any indication <laughs> either way at this point. So, um, I was going to, Oh, also, on the ground, whenever uh, this event is occurring where Laura is going to shoot her father, we see a copy of the Thinker comic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as part of the as part of the scenery. So apparently, that had some influence, maybe, on her father thinking that she was or he was possessed by the squids, which of course we know was all faked from the Watchmen. TV series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nathan, right. I mean, the whole the whole idea that uh, it, it's, it's completely possible, but it's like you you've got this conspiracy that's taken to the extreme mm-hmm. here, to where death is involved. That you know, you are possessed by this thing, so I'm going to kill you. And now I think I'm possessed, so kill me and kill me. It's <laughs> it's it's so wild, but not uh, impossible. <laughs> And, and also on those three pages of that story, you know, where the father is sitting at the grave, the tombstone, and mm-hmm. and then she goes up to him and she walks away and then comes back older. We've got that nine panel grid. Yep. Just like out of Watchmen. So for those three straight pages. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even notice that, but you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else in three? Not specifically in three, but just a, a note that I I really enjoy that this isn't a look at me I'm a Watchman book. It's it's very much it's it's we know who all the players are. We know who the toys that we could play it with because we're in this chest. But everything is just so subtle and grounded, which feels true to the to the original is that it isn't in your face uh, with everything. And I I've been in, I'm enjoying that. You know, just it, it came it re- reoccurred to me as we're kind of flipping through the pages for my third time now and going, Oh yeah, this isn't, this isn't in your face. Yeah, I agree. It's, it doesn't, doesn't rely. It's telling its own story with, with, you know, the references to the, the, that, that universe, but without being fully reliant on it, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's independent. Yeah. But that being said, that origin story for the cowgirl 100% 100% could fit inside of the Watchmen. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just, yeah, it's just perfect for it. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So issue four, we mm-hmm. get a little bit more history about Laura Cummings. Basically, she joined the circus, um, uses her trick shots for her performance, meets 
the circus strongman um, who she basically convinces to become Rorschach for a while. <laughs> um, he does get caught and he's in prison. So this is how the detective is learning this. He's actually interviewing the strong man um, and he's kind of giving some information about, you know, what he knows about Laura, how they met, what her motives were, what he was doing, why he did it. Um, and, but he is not convinced that, you know, Laura is actually dead. So, um, but, you know, we'll assume that she is still at this point. <laughs> he's, I mean, he, he's such a, you know, such a patsy to, I mean, mm-hmm. he was infatuated with her, but not in a romantic way. He mm-hmm. was just, um, he, he just would do anything for her. And then you kind of see in the, as the story is told, he's in prison given his interview to the to the detective and he just wants to color his punches punches pilot punches pirate or, uh, coloring books yeah <laughs> or pirate yeah, pirate. yeah punches, pirate. man i get a lot of tongue twisters there but <laughs> and i coming uh cowgirl she she believes that walter kovacs is is she, that he actually reincarnates or he lives mm-hmm. his essence lives on in these other people mm-hmm. if you know not just the strong man but also in Will Myerson. Mm-hmm. That's uh, so far. That's my my favorite part of this book is like, you know, you're into some weird conspiracy stuff <laughs> when when this is like what your your fact is based around, and just you know those those panels of of just kind of explaining that and being like, well, yeah, that's fact. That's the fact mm-hmm. is is that they couldn't <laughs> defeat the squids. And so Manhattan just got rid of their bodies and and put their souls into other bodies. <laughs> Oz, Ozymandias chose not to, and Doctor Manhattan went away. Like, and it's just like, yeah. holy cow, we are dealing with nuts. It's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, and especially since we know, as the readers, that the whole squid thing, which is a lie, <laughs> you know, but exactly. they obviously yeah. don't know that. So, <laughs> or don't believe that it's a lie, mm-hmm. even though I guess some of the information from you know, the Watchmen series was would be out there at this point. So right. Mm-hmm. Um we ready for five? Oh, I one more comment. Uh the strong man to me reminds me so much of the gladiator from the Daredevil TV series. Um he's basically, you know, we talked about Betsy in Daredevil. It kind of feels like the same exact same guy. Yeah. Now I I'm blanking on his name, but uh I, I should know that. But uh Melvin, Melvin Potter. There it is. Reminds me of Melvin oh, Potter yeah. from Daredevil. So, <laughs> all right. Issue five. I guess this is where the detective finally meets Turley. All right. <laughs> uh, Governor Turley. Their first uh, discussion is with Turley sitting on the John. Uh, we do learn uh, that Turley is a bit of a comedian uh, fan. Uh, he's got the giant uh, smiley face sitting behind the desk. Um, and then we get a little, a couple little additional stories um, about, you know, the comedian, uh, his time in uh, Vietnam. Um, so, yeah, that's what I have for. <laughs> that's what I yeah, have. And this is the issue where I know that Shad said something about it earlier, but this is where it was. The exposition made it clear that Cowgirl or Laura Cummings believes that the squid still take a, you know, take over minds and that Rorschach's soul was transferred by Dr. Manhattan into other people to fight the squid specifically. And, you know, she convinces Will Myerson that he is Rorschach. Um, and this is the, this is the issue where they do the little, uh, they show the backstory of, of Turley and whenever he was in the Vietnam war and his experiences with the comedian. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Now, and Turley okay. really, Turley really believes Redford's behind the assassination. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. No even even if otherwise. there was no, I didn't, I've not seen any evidence presented to us that shows that they were there to kill Turley. Now, that's we can what I was going to say. Getting yeah, ready we to can make thing. that leap of of uh, uh, judgment, but if you're looking at it from the detective's point of view, there is no evidence mm-hmm. that says what they were there for or who they were after. And, and in fact, and in fact, we know that the cowgirl is such a good shot. If she wanted him dead, he would probably be dead. That's oh yeah, too. several times yeah. over. Yeah. yeah. 
Now, okay, so here's the thing that's throwing me in this issue. And again, I think it's just because of the viewpoint of the detective. But we have these scenes where we see Rorschach and Cowgirl standing out in the rain. Now, they're never talking. They're just standing. And you go several pages. And then there'll be an outside scene where you'll get a glance of them Mm -hmm. standing on a street. Right? And then you finally get to the end of the issue. Mm -hmm. And the last page, the detective walks out onto the street. And then... (laughs) Rorschach and Calgaro stand on the opposite side of the street, and then he walks down the middle of the street, and they walk behind him and start laughing. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> Same, because I thought we were going to get a totally different intro into issue six. Like, it was going to be like, oh, they're they're alive and they're with them, but it's mm-hmm. it's almost like he's being haunted by them. Mm-hmm. And he, he's, this case is getting to him maybe in a way. I, I don't know. It does make me think that that thought I had about him seeing other times maybe <laughs> yeah, becomes a little bit more valid, but we don't get anything in six to do anything else with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and to kind of go to, to, to Mike's point about we, we, we've not seen that this party was guilty of doing anything mm-hmm. in, in issue four, we we get one panel in red, which is a, kind of seems like the the flashback to the time of assassination kind of color, a little bit. And there's a it, there's a, a bullseye set you know on Turley, but we don't ever see who had the bullseye on Turley. Mm-hmm. And then in this in in issue five, we get a panel where they it shows where they shoot the cowgirl, and mm-hmm. uh, she's got her gun aimed at them, and it says take her. Uh, so once again, still never showing that she had anything aimed at Turley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And that's a, and that's a good point. So I had I hadn't really thought oh, about. Mike, that you're thing. you're muted. I wouldn't it be something if this turned out to be the Alan Moore analog Charlton characters that ended up fighting the original characters, <laughs> and it was Peacemaker that was. You know, maybe he had the target on yes. Turley. That would be <laughs> so weird. <laughs> uh, all right, anything else in five? Nope. 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 Okay, let's uh, go on to six, which doesn't answer our questions from five, but uh, <laughs> at least gives us some more story. So here, issue six. All right, so the detective, he's staying at a hotel, receives a package that contains a lot of letters, which is basically a lot of correspondence between Laura and Will Myerson. And it basically discusses how their, their conversations and how they eventually meet. Are they're going to, they're actually going to get together and actually meet now included in that correspondence is a note that tells the detective to expect a phone call. Now there's a sequence where the detective goes to the front desk, asked to review camera footage. I'm assuming, but they don't say this explicitly that he is able to ID and find the address for the individual who delivered the package to the, to the hotel. Mm -hmm. Don't know that for a fact. That's how I'm, I'm interpreting it. And then the issue ends with the detective knocking on a door um, of a home. And there's somebody in the house sitting on the couch, watching the presidential debate dressed as Rorschach. And then that's how issue six ends. (laughs) Um, so what do we think about issue six? <laughs> I'm ready to read issue seven. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, it, didn't, it didn't move things forward too it's far. The, it's the perfect um, ending to a volume one, I guess, though, of like, yeah, here's these six issues. Mm-hmm. You get this like wonderful correspondence between your two villains and like kind of a peak of your, you're finally going to get to maybe some answers or what yeah. gets them to get to wanting to assassinate Turley and your, your main character is going to like walk up on this house and (laughs) the end you're done. You got to wait until the next issue. (laughs) (laughs) Now, one thing that throws me in this issue is again, we have this, this correspondence between Laura and will. So in one of these letters, basically Laura says she comes across a couple that are arguing. The husband is beating Beating the wife, she thinks of her father, thinks of Will's father, decides she's going to be a good citizen, 
right? Mm-hmm. Which is a reference to the Citizen comic book. So she kills the husband that is apparently beating the wife or the boyfriend that's beating the girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they say it explicitly, but, right. but either mm-hmm. way, shoots and kills this one. So Will writes a response, and then Laura basically was going to kill herself. But mm-hmm. because of Will's response, she doesn't. But I wouldn't take it that she would. It sounds like she found her purpose. So it's like, why would she try to go to kill herself if she had found her purpose, what she was supposed to be doing? So I just I felt that was a little off sequence wise. And it's almost like those two letters should have been reversed. But hmm. I, I, that's just that's just me. And that's me being nitpicky, you know. I'd, yeah, it could I'd, be. It could be. Yeah. It was it's he had the weirdest response to a letter when somebody says they're going to kill themselves. And he's like, I was 19 once. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, I remember oh, those days. I mean, I guess maybe <laughs> yeah. that's what she needed, though, because mm-hmm. what, whatever she was unsure about, it feels like he kind of did linger, lock her into, you know, whatever kind of wavering thoughts she had at that moment, whatever he said in that letter something in there said some meant something to her to go oh no you're right this is my purpose yeah and maybe that's what it is so maybe the letters what saved her the i need you maybe i mean mm-hmm. that was the thing that stood out was that yeah you know, i i need i need you to her yeah that, that's that's these reminded me of the uh issues where batman and catwoman had letters to each other <laughs> dear bat dear cat but yeah, I am definitely ready to go on to issue seven. I hope it's not a gut punch like Strange Adventures issue seven was. <laughs> oh yeah, don't tell me that. At least with these characters, I don't think you can destroy, you know, mm-hmm. childhood memories as right. as there has as some of his <laughs> stories have done. <laughs> yeah, so um so, you know, I think I've mentioned, I've probably probably said this once well, since we've been talking, but, you know, the thing about Tom King's writing, there's always like this one fatal flaw that I have to get past. And so far, I haven't found it in these six issues. So that makes me hopeful, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that there's not going to be that big, you know, I have to get over something to actually enjoy the story. Uh, so far, yeah. you know, I'm really, you know, I'm really enjoying this. I like the pacing. I love the art. It feels like it belongs in Watchmen. It's just been really, really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that I've had the same problem with Tom King stories that you have. Mine isn't really a fatal flaw in storytelling. Is more, It's more the, the investment I have in some characters that have been around for decades that he deconstructs them or just destroys them and, and some oh. and you don't know if it's continuity. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. me being too much of a stickler of, okay, what's what's continuity what's not but this there's not as much of an investment because they're i mean let's face it so these are new characters for mm-hmm. i mean they're kind mm-hmm. of referencing the old ones but they're and even the old ones it wasn't like we had a whole lot of them it wasn't mm-hmm. decades worth of uh superman and you turn them into you know a mass murderer or something right, right. or adam strange maybe i should say yeah you know <laughs> or turning kid flash into that you know yeah so are we going to grade these issues? Uh, overall, oh, okay. What's that? I said, are we going to grade these issues? Oh, we can. We can do the first half grading. Okay. All right. So, Chad, you go first. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I would uh, just on the fly. I would say that I'd probably give it a nine point oh, and I I really think it's it's really good. Maybe even higher uh, than that. I'm I'm reserving a higher grade to see how the back half flushes out. Maybe. Uh, but but really, I I thought this is awesome. The it, it felt cinematic in the way that it moved. It it just felt like I was kind of yeah, reading pacing along. Was great. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. pacing was really really good. And uh, and I think the the thing I've enjoyed most by Tom King so far. Like I I mean, I'd... you guys have kind of pushed me into reading Tom King because I just had n- nothing against him at all. But out of everything I've read so far, it's like okay, this is this is the thing. Mm-hmm. Scott, I'll, you go, please. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go with a very fine, just because of the fact that we don't have the conclusion to the story. 
and there's a long way that this could go up and there's a long way that this could go down <laughs> depending, depending on what happens. So that very fine is my threshold where something that I definitely am glad I read. I'll probably re- read it again. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see if when all said and done, if it actually makes it into the collection or if it's something that I'm just ready to, to pass off whenever I'm done with it. So <laughs> you're so pragmatic, Scott. I love your analysis. You know, you've got to have it a, makes it or it it's doesn't. Got sink or swim. <laughs> I mean, otherwise everything's like a, everything gets rated high. You know, it's like, oh well, no, I'm, I'm uh, Scott. Awesome, that's what I do. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, when I'm, I'm going never, through, I'm never gonna put this in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm going through my collection to get rid of stuff, I I I haggle with myself. Yes, get rid of it. No, don't. Yes, get rid of it. No, don't. I mean, all within like 30 seconds, I'm like, changed my mind five times. But I'm gonna give it a nine two, uh, just because I'm gonna base it solely on these first six issues. I'm not going to be anticipatory with my grading because of Tom King's earlier stories that we've re- we've reviewed um if it the back half is disappointing then i'll grade it as such but i think this first half is just i mean you said it chad the whole um cinematic and, and pacing it's 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 not every not every writer or storyteller can tell a story in a non-linear fashion and do it mm-hmm. well I mean, it's it's not an easy thing to do, I don't think. And this is done. It gives you that backstory without a feeling like you're you're actually having to stop and go back. You're just like it's 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 uh, it just happens. And yeah. And you, yeah. So nine two at the least. So. Yep. Like it. All right. Well, we're ready to shake it up. Shake it up. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> shake, shake, shake. What's bad is I'm I not just finished uh, that song. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's bad is I switched phones yesterday and I realized I hadn't put the app back on. So I was like, oh, crud. So I had oh, to no. get it downloaded and, and then resync everything and, and all oh. that fun stuff. So speaking right, of so. sync, I got to sync mine first because who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So who wants to who wants to go first? I'll take a run at it. All right. Oh, I, uh, I've got, oh, where's my camera? There it is. Uh, this is the <laughs> oh. image plus extras magazine. Uh, so yeah, it has the <laughs> witch's second story in it. Let's see, I know this is actually, uh, the final part of the, uh, Negan origin origin story that it's, or the oh, okay. here's Negan. Uh, so this is the first run of the image plus, uh, thing. So that would have been really the only reason to to have this is because of the Here's Negan uh, origin story in there. Um, I mean, I enjoyed reading the little summaries of whatever books were coming out. Let's see. If we look at the cover, there's uh, Winnebago Graveyard, which I never read. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, the uh, Divided States of Hysteria. I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> there's an uh, um, uh, article they wrote on with uh about mark uh silvestri um so they did a coverage on that and then the final uh, yeah i believe the final issue of here's nikon on there okay no not the final issue my bad there were 16 issues in that run so that's just one of the stories oh okay all right uh mike you want to go are you still sinking uh you can go ahead okay so let's shake this Oh, oh, wow. OK, so Voodoo uh, Volume Two, Number One. OK, that's the new 52 uh, Voodoo. That's the new 52. Yeah. So uh, I read this. I didn't like it. <laughs> um, but you I have it, it in my collection. No, because I bought all of the first issues for new 52. Every oh. single one of them. I put them in a drawer. And, uh, yeah, and I haven't done anything with them since. <laughs> well, let, let's see that cover again. I did, I've not, I've not, um, I knew that was one of the new 52. Who's the art on that? That would be Sam Bros, Bossery. Oh, uh, yeah. Sammy Bosry. Bos- yeah. Bosry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I don't so know the premise artist. of that story. I, I, or that book. Uh, written by Ron Mars, art and cover by Sam, Sammy Brasri. Who is Voodoo? Is she hero, villain, or both? Learn the truth about Priscilla Catan, Catan, excuse me, as she leaves a trail of violence 
um, across America discover the new DCU through her eyes because the things she sees are not always what they seem. Mm. I don't think this series lasted very long in the new no. 52. It must not have, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's why I had it because it was new 52. And uh, I would not still have anybody. I still have it because I haven't pulled it out of my collection yet. So, <laughs> yeah, it's I keep I kept telling myself I'm going to sell the entire new yeah. two first issues as a set. And nobody's wanted to buy them. <laughs> no, I just haven't taken the time to even list them any place. Gotcha. So, you know, <laughs> no, I'll take them. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> I think it's only one of those. It's, well, maybe there's two issues there that are worth money: the first Batman and the first Suicide Squad. Yeah. And the rest of. What them about are, the Action Comics one? I don't think it's worth anything. No. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't know. All right. What do you got, Mike? Let's see here. I didn't shake it well enough. <laughs> Still no. Oh boy. <laughs> Need my specs. <laughs> All right, we got Villains United number six from 2005. This was a uh, an Infinite Crisis spinoff series, um, and issue six, which I know I've read it, but and I kind of like those villain centric books. I don't like. It's not like I like to read just a, a you know a book that's only about a villain and, and it's ongoing, but if it's um about like a group of villains that are getting together and what their motives are, this is about um, the secret six are forced to defend themselves from the onslaught of the society, which the society is the injustice society or either that or the society of uh, super villains, one of the two. And they realize they don't stand a chance of survival somehow some way they get outside help that might just be able to make a difference in the long run. This series was written by Gail Simone and penciled by Dale, e- e- Dale Eaglesham, uh, which two great creators. Uh, the main characters was there was a particular parademon that he, um, you know, he kind of rose from the, the mundane legions of parademons to be his own little guy or own little thing. He had Black Adam, the calculator, and this is when after the calculator kind of moved on from his his little costume era to he was just basically the villain version of Oracle. Uh, he had Green Arrow and Bolt. Um, so I remember it. Do I remember how good it was? No, but <laughs> I'd say if it was Gail Simone, I probably enjoyed it. Well, it's funny that I got a New 52 book and you got that book because the New 52 was the death of the Secret Six comic, if I remember correctly. <laughs> oh, because because yeah. they didn't do they decided to go back to Suicide Squad yeah. instead of Secret Six in New 52. And that's what everybody was like. What about Secret Six? What about Secret Six? And they didn't. How long did it take them to do anything? Secret Six in New 52. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that brings us to the close of another episode. Uh, Mike, if they wanted to actually. Chad, would you like to tell us what we have coming in an upcoming episode? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would love to tell you. Uh, <laughs> next episode, we are going to be celebrating Image's 30th anniversary of being around on this planet uh, by talking about our favorite uh, Image series, as well as... Or uh, maybe going... a Image series. <laughs> <laughs> or that. Or, or uh, multiples, and maybe my case. Uh, and then we'll also be going through what we've been reading lately, because it's been a while since we've done that. And then, of course, another CLZ shake. All right. So, Mike, somebody wants to, you know, express their gratitude for your Villains United collection. Where would they do that? I would that? give my Twitter handle, but, uh, you know, I, I, I w- I've been trying to gain control of the, the stock and buy out twitter but uh, <laughs> must beat me to it must so to it, yeah. we'll just go with old-fashioned email he outbid you by a billion yeah a billion or two <laughs> oh, uh, uh m.atchison90 at gmail.com shad you can find me on facebook at uh, shad schubert s-h-a-a-d-s-c-h-u-b-e-r-t and then of course the can't get rights has all kinds of shows coming up so check us out on facebook as well and then I'm Scott Reed. You can find me at bergcomics.com, B-U-R-G comics.com. And let's see, what do I got coming up? I'll be in Dyersburg, Tennessee, this coming mm. Saturday, April 30th, and then in Evansville, Indiana on May 14th. And then Superman Celebration, July 
8th through the 10th, or, or I can't remember the exact dates. And then, of course, the Muddy Monster comic uh, uh, con coming up on July 23rd, not 24th. Um, so I'll be there as well. I think you can probably see most of us there on July 23rd. I'll be there. So, all right, good deal. All right, so there you have it. And we'll be back with episode 127. We are now being recorded. It is starting the recording, starting the recording. Okay, it is being recorded. So, <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. Anything yes. you say will be used can against and you. Will. Can and will. Can and will. I was gonna say, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Not can though. Here, it will be used against you. Here, <laughs> right. you never know what's gonna end up on the on the back of the episode. Right. <clears throat> right. So, all right. Now, I guess actually, have you already called your wife? Are we gonna have to like be running off at like eight forty-five for you to make a phone call? What's the status there? I'm sorry, you're breaking up there, Scott. <laughs> I, I text. I tried to call her on my walk with oh. my daughters, and uh, she's on the phone with my daughter, my other daughter. So <laughs> I told her that I'm going to be on a podcast starting about six thirty, her time. Okay, and I'll call her when we're done. So we can expect so. the text to start here in about forty five minutes. <laughs> we can what? We can expect the text messages to start in about forty five minutes. No, no, she she knows it takes an hour and a half at least. So. <laughs>